go just to kick start the discussion. Okay, now it's been recorded. Okay, hi guys. So I would like to kick start a conversation regarding the work that Alex was doing for the last like week or two at this point. Uh, mainly it's uh, projecting the results of our different teams into team lit into literature review tool development and uh, I would like to kind of introduce Manuel here to the process and uh, the way I see like how we can do effectively here is I would like to amplify the work that Alex is doing and uh, the way I see it is to uh, let's go through the pipeline that Task Ties did and then what uh, additions that Alex was doing. And let's identify areas that we could essentially kind of freeze uh, and, and kind of produce. So in a sense, right now we have like a Google Collab, right? A big one that you, Alex, trying to run, right? Uh, yeah, okay, Kaggle, um, but yeah. There's a big yeah. notebook. Well, exactly. So the goal is to identify the pieces that won't need to be changed later on and just package them into like uh, Python packages. So later on, we could create uh, like a, it will be much easier to create a Docker container to run it on a data data set, etc. So the idea that I see it is identify those pieces, package them as, as Python packages, and now the Python notebook becomes much smaller, right? When you import those dependencies, and now the only uh, like this moving pieces in the in, in the in the Python notebook will be left. So it will be much easier to do R and D and you know play with the data itself, and not just kind of like oh I have this huge notebook, I need to run all of those pieces and. Uh, just kind of speed up that process. And that way we could simplify the notebook itself and now start delegating some of those moving pieces to other people. So it's, it's not only you, Alex, doing this. So that's kind of my goal and like the idea from my perspective. Uh, I got two little questions. Uh, uh -huh. the, the first one is, when we are talking about making Python packages, I mean, mm -hmm. for example, for all the task ties uh, pipeline, mm -hmm. not that each process independently will have one package because that will be uh, a hell. I mean, we agreed on that. Yeah, so, I mean, the, the idea that I have is, I mean, essentially not I have, it's following up from like, you know, previous time we were discussing this. So the, the idea is that instead of having like currently like I say, a Kaggle kernel on a Kaggle platform, we want to essentially move it on our infrastructure in terms of processing. And the, the idea is that eventually, like the whole pipeline, it's a Docker container that we run like when we need to, right? In order to create a Docker container, like in terms of continuous integration process, it will be great to simply have it as like, so piece of code will be obviously something will be still in the code, but the rest dependencies, it's when you create your Docker image, you install all of that, you know? So let's say if somebody, like if we have a piece of code that, uh, you know, takes the data from, you know, one place, puts into another place. So you essentially productionize it in the form of a Python package, only the config files, I mean like not config files, the actual place, okay, import data from there. This is what what people are supposed to touch, right? If we want the if they yeah, want exactly. to run that pipeline. But but we need to define for the end pipeline what will be the user interface and which parameters will be mm -hmm. accepting. Let's say okay, you have the pipeline. You can say this is the data set. Exactly. Uh, you can exactly. use this cloud uh, uh, engine, and you need to use these parameters for these parts. Maybe even have just a JSON file with everything. So it's uh, clearer. Well, um, exactly. This is essentially what, what the goal of this call is just to start kind of identifying those areas. What, like, what what we could, like, remove from essentially a data scientist, and just leave the interface for them. Yeah, but uh, I mean, um, when when we started on Corona, we we have the same problem. 
about how we can uh, make reproducible and uh, mm -hmm. easy to share uh, results uh, for non-data scientists when you are working with notebooks and then we tried with the repositories but people mm -hmm. upload the, the notebooks but if you have ever tried to um, check the differences on a notebook um, with GitHub is uh, impossible because it's mm -hmm. inside, it's just a JSON, so it's it's a mess. Uh, and later I found that there is one, well, you can uh, engine one way uh, having the people, the repositories in their local and generating Python files that is the one that get uh, uploaded to the repository. So the data scientists can work with notebooks, even they can have it uh, on Colab or whatever. Mm -hmm but also keeping uh, everything like uh, Python packages because in the end, uh, I suppose that when you want to run the pipeline, you don't want to run it from a notebook. I mean, you maybe want to play with it on a notebook, but you want to be able to have uh, one uh, Python script that uh, takes a set of parameters from a file and runs it, and it, this is the, the run. And when you, we just change the, the, the parameters files, that, that will be the end goal. Mm -hmm. Then yes. uh, to to make this, that means that uh, all the pipeline, everything, everything that is on notebooks, should be on Python packages, and we should start from the bottom, because once we got, for example, the part of task ties in this uh, pipeline, we should be, as you said, uh, using the packages instead of cop uh, copy paste the code. That will make it easier, and yeah, yeah that, well, that be the... yes, as as the final goal, yes, but we still need to get there. Right, yeah, and that's I, why, I, like, like, my proposal here is again, like, we don't rush immediately to kind of like, okay, like the whole notebook is now, you know, like a package or something. We're trying to, to package it. The, the the idea right now, step by is, step, yeah. Yeah. So, like, essentially, we're going through intermediary phase when you still have. So, uh, for example, like, I don't think that what Alex is doing, like, he he need to like think about like oh packaging you know everything into python packages he needs to essentially interact with them uh but like don't necessarily think about like oh you know every time i'm doing my essentially r d run on the data i need to commit it somewhere so I no, mean, no, I think but, well, he should be he should he must be uh, i mean on the on the end we have to make the people who are doing data scientist work is unaware or doesn't need to care about the software engineering part yeah exactly i mean it, uh, also by the way just to get uh, more that, that pipeline that you are talking is the one that on the that is explained the notion uh, page that you sent me uh so i said you're right there is like a big one stage one stage two stage three stage four uh yeah. so let, let let us actually quickly go go through through it um I'll turn my and camera. So over just, here. just so you guys know, and I think I think we'll see this on the on the Notion notebook. But mm -hmm. um, what I so the the task ties notebook is is um, it basically has kind of two main parts. There's a FICE engine, a similarity document similarity engine. Uh, with the Facebook AI similarity search, and then there's all the models. Um, so like it's a very clear like where the division should be, which I think is it, maybe for other notebooks may not be quite as easy. But the FICE part has been, for the most part, taken care of and moved over to a a Pi file uh, fr from a notebook. Uh, and integrated with MongoDB. Okay, so let me sh like uh, hold on. So it's test ties, right? So this yeah. what you're talking about. Let me throw this just out of the way. So you're talking about like this FICE engine, right? So I just finished that up the other day, mm -hmm. um, yesterday or the day before, uh, and so it's. Um, like this, the similarity searches, uh, as far as I can see, is working now. I, I couldn't get <clears throat> because my CPU is old. I can't, <laughs> I can't mm -hmm. run the thing except outside or except in um, in Colab. But uh, 
it, it should be working just fine. I had Matan run it. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, so, so, yeah. Do you guys... In, can can you post... GitHub repo. Sorry, go ahead. Already. Yeah. Well, this was... I was trying like, to ask, like, so is, is, is the code somewhere so we could start looking into it? Um, yeah, I pushed... So I pushed the, the notebook, the collab notebook, as well as the pi file there um, to the... What was it? Team literature review or something like that? Uh -huh. okay. Yeah. Um, and, and I realized like there's probably a file structure that I should be adhering to. I just wanted yeah, to get they, something I, I in can, there. I can take care of that. I was look. Uh, I was looking there on the on the wrong repository because <laughs> I was looking for the task ties repo, and I was uh, okay. Yeah. So well, yeah. Is, there's a separate repo for it. Yeah. Okay. So this is the one that. I should be okay. So let me pro let, let's probably like we need to. Okay, I'll I'll reorganize the notion a little bit because I I just use task ties for as a, like this historical record over here. But I guess yes. it's time to you know drop drop the, the like the. It's reference. not just ties anymore, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Because we're in, we're in, but then we've got another page already for task risks. Are we gonna mm. just combine those or? Do we want to leave it for ties until we fill out, uh, well, we'll, like the functionality, like once until we modular modularize all of ties? Do we want to bring in risk? Well, so the idea is right now is like this one. So the stuff that was done as part of task ties, it could stay here, but then uh, when we go to our literature review, right? Mm. So, so in a sense, here you you just simply like okay, this is our stage, and hold on, mm -hmm. um, you just do like the reference, like this page is referenced to okay. test ties. Gotcha. And th I mean that's that's like my thought process over here. Um, so let's focus again for like this. So what what this abbreviation actually means? Uh, uh, right. Facebook AI similarity search. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. Right. So um, there, there are a handful of these types of packages. There's one out of Spotify mm. called Annoy, mm. um, and there's another one out of I don't know some other group. But oh, so this this is where like this Annoy. Thing. This was I I'm I'm remembering like Lukas wanted to do Annoy as well. So it's it's part of this. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I can't. I I remember seeing something about it in his documentation. Uh. I think. Yeah, uh, Anton, by the way, I don't know why, but sometimes on, on Notion, uh, I get asked that I don't have access to kernel. I can see the Notion for task ties, but I cannot see ah, the okay. one that you give me. Uh, can, you act, uh, can you add yeah, me? Look, yeah, I'll, I'll add you. What, uh, what do you want? Which email? Yeah, I'm, I'm writing here this one. I admit or... On Slack. I, I'm here on the meet. I read it on the meet. Uh, okay. Boom. Yeah, le like we're. we're uh, boom. Do you need to add other people? I'll add uh, that. Not that I'm aware. That's. Okay. All I need but still, you, all of you guys should be able to add people. And we, we have a t like an open source team account. So. It's free from Notion for for Corona Y. Cool. Okay, can you check on your end, Manuel? If if everything. I'm checking that I have received the email, but I think that I get it on the no, not on the spam filter, not yet. So if you like, I think if you go directly to to Notion, you should be able to see like the workspace. So if you go. Okay. Uh, Notion South Corona Y, like this, this link. Okay. Well, it should show up in his list on the top left corner there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, now I can. Now I can. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So, quick question to you, Alex. Like, yeah. the Pi and, you know, Pi to Notebook is it's supposed to be the same code? Um, it, it, it's. Uh, oh. So I tried, I tried to like compress things. Okay. So, uh, fair warning. I, I have 
uh, almost no experience in software engineering. So uh, you guys will probably laugh when you see my stuff, and it's okay. I have a lot to learn. Um, no problem. I won't. <laughs> trust me, trust uh, so, me, I won't. So, so, well, teach me, teach me. Um, so anyways, I, but I tried to compress everything down into, into functions, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so, so I've got four functions in there that, that should mimic the, uh, what's in the, in the collab notebook. But, uh, like I said, I haven't been able to test it. So, mm -hmm. like, I, I got everything in the file, right? And then I created the, the, um. Like I got everything in the file identical in front to the collab, and then I created it. So, you know, it, like I said, it needs some testing. Yeah, and well, there are things like putting the credentials up in the open. That is, well, yeah, <laughs> that thing is well, like, it's those are rigid credentials, right? The yeah, I did. I did ask about that and because because they were yeah. read only. We ah, okay, okay, then. But. But yeah, <laughs> no. But that, you know what? The, the thing is that uh, there, there, are, there are things that uh, on the scope of uh, software engineering that always you can, like, uh, I don't know how to say it in English, like improve a little step further or take uh, yeah. this detail in account. So this is a never-ending yeah. thing. But I can, uh, if you want, I can have a look at it. Please. And yeah. Put, uh, comments and create an issue with them, and we first discuss them. I mean, if I if I write you down something and you don't agree, feel free to discuss or explain me why you did or why would you think that uh, it makes sense in in that way. I'm not yeah. I, I'm not the owner of the absolute truth, uh, but uh, we can start doing uh, like a little review and then. Uh, that's great. Yeah, that's great. And also, I will. Well, all the all the structure of the repository. Because this is what we should be having, if I'm not uh, mistaken, like the main pipeline uh, package that is the end game to have, right, Anton? Mm -hmm. Yes. But uh, we can start putting things like CI and making it a ready Python package installable because this uh, is taking so time. right now. Uh, let me kind of let me show you what kind of worked nicely. Uh, like before on, on like this pre-processing example over here, just in terms of how we actually like were able like to to scale and run the the data science kind of pre-processing pipeline like very quickly. Uh, let me go back to. Do you guys still see my screen, right? Yeah. Oh, not my screen, like on another. So I'm talking about just only like this stage one. And uh, uh, so this go again, like very simple stuff. Like this repo, let me actually show you another one. So at first, M M Manuel, remember Brandon, right? So Brandon yeah. created this pipeline that takes like science spacey model and just, you know, run them on top of Core 19 data set, like full text JSONs. So that was done like one big Python uh, uh, notebook. And then uh, Brandon was using like ridiculously big machine to run it. And when there yeah, was like 20,000 papers. It, yeah, exa exactly. So he stopped at about, I think, version 12. Then we got. Uh, We're at 39 now, 38. Oh, right now it's 40. I mean, like right now it's rolling release like <laughs> every day something new supposed to, to came out. So then uh, Team Search Engine and Lukash, they essentially did, they took where Brandon kind of what he did and essentially was rewrote the whole pipe. I mean, not from scratch, you know, but utilizing bits and pieces and they essentially created this pipeline. Again, everything was just like this, uh, like no Python packages, nothing. Uh, but the whole yeah. point was at least everything in in in, in like function formats. There yeah, was, this is the first step. Yeah, I mean, is right. So here is what was essentially the I took like. So this code was actually using some Python library to like uh, uh, parallelize the the thread. So it like was yeah. you will be you, you like you could run in parallel maybe. Uh, so. The, the issue with this pipeline, it, it's very RAM intensive. So for every thread, you need like 16 gigs of RAM. 
okay. uh, to run it and like to load sky spacing model etc so when i was kind of tried to run it on the server and lucas did like some analysis over here it was a, like ridiculous i'm like okay something is wrong maybe like the way we use like data frames or something like pandas data frames or something let me just simplify so on top of like i took this code and simply did this pre-processing so it's essentially like one main file everything i mean it's all of that but i stripped out all the parallelization just for simplicity and then package this into a docker container you know and then afterwards oh jeremy's back nice everybody's going coming back to corona wifi for, for some reason and then i was simply running like you know here is like one container that takes processing and runs it but what i did i think there is another branch uh oh it's not documented but actually you know what let's go back to notion i should have it somewhere um, And to switch workspaces. So then I was essentially like, I took uh, da, 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 pre processing. So this is like how to run like one container, but I just specified, you know, a couple of workers that splits the input. So there is like a metadata file. Remember, like that huge table that comes with Code 19? So I simply simplify how many, like how to split lines and how many chunks and which chunk to process. That's it, right? No Python packages, nothing, just simple step. And then I was able to simply run a bash script like this that finds a bunch of containers that take specific chunk of, of data, process it and, and put it into output folder. That's it. And then I was able like to run it on a slightly big, not slightly like, quite a bit machine in terms of RAM. And here are some like so 48 cores, blah, 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 lots of RAM. And I just found a bunch of Dockers, boom. And I had like the fast, like I, I believe that during that time, so this is, was my analysis of write-ups. So this is where all of my 21 containers start on that machine. And in about like 19 hours, majority of them like processed the whole Core 19 data set. And what is left here is papers that requires Google Translate to translate it into English and things like that. So so it's relied on third parties. There are some delays, it's blah, blah, blah. So in the end, it's like, again, another chunk of containers dropped off, etc. So this is the, the load on the disk. Okay. Uh, so maximum load, like super fast. So I was able to run at that time, it was version 39 that was maybe five times bigger than what Brandon was running it. But it was all done under one day, you know, versus what we had initially that would probably take us, I don't know, uh, a couple of uh, weeks, I think, at that time. Because Lucas was struggling to pr like paralyze the Brandon's pipeline because it took a week or so. So Lucas was kind of like, okay, I was I was able to make it under run under 20 hours, but that was version V19, right? So in a sense, this process like my point here is this type of process works very simple stuff, but now, uh, like all of this was essentially done like the crude way, you know? Actually, you know what, let yeah. me stop sharing so, my screen a little bit here. So Anton, what I'm hearing you say is. Lucas pipeline and the mm -hmm. K8, K8S pipeline are obsolete. No, they're not obsolete, but that thing will, will also go through the same process of, you know, we will do a, like a Python package, etc. It just, what I did, okay. I kind of like, okay, yeah. I don't have a software team to, 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 to throw on this. So let's just do what we have package into container and run it because the goal was to get the data we get the data everything is nice but like in order to go next step continuous integration essentially you know make it all happen we will do the same thing as what we're discussing right now for this uh face engine 
Okay. We just right now we already have manual over here, and we could kind of like okay, let's let's do it, N not three steps ahead, but at least two. Let me not two, but like whatever we can. But let me let me first uh, explain one thing that uh, maybe I'm not if you are aware. It's just that you are more familiar working this way, and mm. I'm not trying to criticize, but. Uh, uh, we can have one repository that contains uh, one Python package. That means that the code is in a certain structure and everything, blah, blah, blah. But this mm -hmm. same repository outside of the Python package can have the utilities to have uh, one single uh, entry point in terms of deployment and execution. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I've, I've worked with projects that you can uh, use them uh, as libraries on third parties, and you install them, and this is the interface we, we want, for example, to have on the task ties, on the preprocessing, on, on everything, but also having uh, this same uh, repository, having the Python that is the executable mm -hmm. that can uh, work with Docker machines, and this process that you were doing on Bash uh, of uh, writing 20 Docker machines with everything, uh, be uh, everything done. Uh, on Python, in the sense that you just enter and you say Python run Py and it uh, and the parameters that you want to put and it does uh, everything. So in, in that sense, even if it's a Python package, you can m manage the deployment and the execution using Python. In well, the sense what, that what you're saying is exactly what I want. Okay, perfect. No, just, like I, was not, I was not sure when, when you explained to me how you run the Docker, I, I understand that we need to parallelize, but I was not aware, uh, I was not sure if uh, where to put the separation and, and what everybody was aware that we can do. So in this sense, uh, we can make, for example, uh, one thing that is the Python library, and another thing mm. that uh, ex uh, the hand the manage the execution of the Python library. Mm -hmm. So in, in this sense, this means that you just get to the server and it's one line. Uh, you git clone, you install, you run, and you are well, done. Well, exactly, Maya, like you said exactly what what I wanted. Like, uh, let okay. me see. Do I have a Docker? So you, what I was say, like showing to you, right? There was not, not even like a Docker file over here. It was just like simply I needed a repo to sync up between like, you know, like remote machine and my like local machine. And then the image itself, I essentially baked in manually as well. So all of this was manual process. Like later on, all of this task will be, you know, on the shoulders of integration pipeline. And for it essentially, right, there will be like, do, like Docker file, essentially, you know how it looks, right? From this image, and then you do like Python install requirements, and then the requirements there will be like this files package that 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 we're building. So exactly. I mean, I'm I'm taught, like everything you're saying. This is exactly what the the like the direction. Just, we're, we're, also, we're I don't know if this is done, but I think that Slava told me that Dataverse mm -hmm. allows you to have a Docker. Uh, archive. So we, you, yes. we can even make something like having our CI building the images mm. and making the deployment process not just uh, taking the images and executing because I'm sure that Amazon allows you to run containers if you put them. Yes. So uh, let it I don't know if, if, if in terms of uh, expenses is more expensive or is more reliable or what, but I know that uh, it's like the easy and clean way to yeah, so the, the thing is, like, regarding Amazon, like, literally this week, me and Maxime, we were, like, going through, like, you know, costs on Amazon, etc. And if you start going to this container registry here and there, everything becomes quite a bit expensive. So that's why, like, I'm actually, so in, in order to like, scope for this conversation, let's kind of pu push away all of this continuous deployment pipelines, containers okay. away. It's, um, like... I wanted just to show you how everything is works within Coronavirus right now. So forget about okay. this continuous integration, like all of that complexity. Like right now we're doing like this simple things and we like actually learn as, as I go, because usually when I was touching containers for data science, well, always all of that is ready piece. And then I'm like, oh, so what, what, what do you guys need in terms for me as a data scientist? And they'll be like, oh, we need this model, this is this. And then you can, okay, so, why why do you like 
for one project, there was like this project that essentially just delivered the Python notebook. And then there was another team that was productionizing. I'm like, this is like dumb process. So the next time that I was kind of dealing with similar thing, I'm kind of like, guys, what do you actually need? Show me what, what you have on the other end. And then you essentially do uh, like model deployment, etc. But I think Corona Y, where we are standing right now, we're not at that time, we're kind of this initial step that kind of like, okay, first of all, everybody, like, I think Alex, you're also interested in seeing the end to end, how everything run, right? Yeah. In terms of learning experience. Yeah. So to mm -hmm. me, I, I see this as this kind of like learning opportunity for everybody over here, because we could go through all of the stages and not jumping in like, oh, wait a second, we know that we will use Travis continuous integration on GitHub and yada, yada. Here, we just do simple stuff. Everybody, like on this call, should be able to run and replicate the, the, the results on their local machine or in Google Collab or somewhere, right? And then all of the pieces we do, it just simply like, instead of having function definition on your Python notebook, which always looks kind of ugly, right? You need to do this code folding, all of this, so it looks nice when you actually see the pipeline. So the moment we see, kind of like, oh, this is like robust function. It needs to be in this package repo or like, you know, package, like, that's how I see it. And the moment this is done, the final goal is exactly what Manuel, you outlined in the beginning of this conversation. The idea for people to collaborate on it, but in order to do this, we need to first kind of atomize these pieces and then simply say, okay, guys, we have the similarity function, but there is zero testing on it. So Alex kind of shows up on call, guys, I did this, you know, amazing R&D run, everything seems to work, but now, you know, we need coverage of tests. And we create a simply like a ticket in our volunteering system and for others, people from ChronoWatch just to say, guys, we have a simple task, we need a you know unit test for this function, and that's it. So instead of like, um, so this is kind of like the lessons I personally learned from like Kaggle rounds one and two. It's just simply if you do everything right, and you know Tasgeo and TaskVT did everything like in that route, then the burden of this pull requests when people just learning to use GitHub, it's it's a disaster. So you kind of like, okay, forget about it, guys. Just send me your Google Collapse. That's it. That's the only thing needs from like those type of members. But the moment yeah. when you tell them everything is ready, you just say like, guys, here is the scope. Just unit test for function. This is where that process will shine. So that's kind of like what I learned from that experience. So here, like I like right now, we only have a handful of people. So essentially it's, Alex, Manuel, me, Matan, uh, and, and a few others, right? Once in a while, like people join. Oh, what was your experience, Alex, on, on terms of working on this? Say it again, what was that? So like who besides you, Matan, uh, so far touched this in terms of code and actually like running things? Do you have like, this, like the, the test tie stuff? Yes. Oh, just me and my time. Like that's it. For the yeah. last like right month uh, or something. The other people I know are, are working on other projects. Yeah. Like okay. Corona Right. So like in the, the sense we have right stuff. now super small team that everybody like actually cares about the like making this pipeline work. So we're like have super motivated people at this point. Um so uh so I think well, from I, I, end, I have I more time than most. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, I I have more time than most because I'm unemployed. So, <laughs> so I mean, how um, much of the people are in between projects, between jobs, etc. So I think it's yeah, yeah. There is no other way. Otherwise, people so don't have time. Yeah, yeah, probably. Well, then, just to concrete uh, first steps. Mm -hmm. uh, then we all agree about what we were talking that I will start doing a first review on the repository team literature mm -hmm. review. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we'll open issues. And after I'm done with that, uh, we will discuss maybe just Alex and I, or if you want to join us, or whoever. I mean, 
in an open discussion about mm -hmm. what is important, what is not, and where to start. Should be more or less these are the first steps. Uh, I, I mean, let me check one second because I'm not as free uh, as I was, and I. Well, I got the weekend, and I think that I, I can have a, the first view during the weekend, but maybe to meet again until uh, the second half of the week, uh, I won't be able. Okay. I mean, if you write me on a Slack, uh, I can answer in 12, 24 so how, hours. So for all of this, like, uh, let me make sure, like, housekeeping stuff regarding access to... Uh, l let me just see, like, who has access to, to this... Hold on. Um, you can create issues, I think. Yeah, a new issue. And I can comment code. Oh, so here we have team literature review team. Uh, Alex is here. So, um, Manuel, I'm adding. What's your GitHub name? Um, let me. A first few letters, so far. Uh, Manuel. Alvarez, uh, and a C, C like uh, Chicago. Ah, oh, okay, man, like you need to type the whole name for GitHub to suggest you, even though you're already part of the... <laughs> man, interesting. Okay, so I added you to Team Literature Review GitHub team, so you should have uh, right access to to the repo. Uh, cool. Do you need more than right access no, to the repo? No, if, I mean, if I can create uh, issues, that I I, I got the mm. permission just because I was member of the Cornwall big team organization. I mean, uh, so with with that, I'm is is all mm. that I need because I, I can read everything. All the repositories are in open, mm. so that's uh, all we needing. Okay, so sounds good. I will I will create the the issue, commenting stuff to do. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. if there are conceptually different things, uh, we'll create different issues, and we start discussing from there uh, from where we go. Yes. Yeah, and feel free to use Notion and just add stuff over there. Uh, I'll, I'll try to think through like how to reorganize a bit of the structure from this high level. So the idea, like the way I use Notion, is is just to simply have this, like if you unfold or like unpack all of the pages, sub pages, because it's all markup, just markup files, it will be like, it, it's supposed to be super descriptive, but the idea is this, the moment you fold everything into pages, it's all like simple uh, steps, you know, like stage one, we, we, we took and created sky space, a pre-processing steps. Then turns out, oh, like so, essentially we have sky space embeddings. Now we already have Spectre embeddings, right, Alex? Uh, for, uh, supplied th with yeah, those are the ones. Yeah, those right. are the ones from Kaggle. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, they're, not, they're coming all the way from AI, Allen Institute of AI that maintained the data set. Yeah. So here, here is the idea, right? The Allen yeah. Institute of AI create coordinating data set. They immediately run Spectre embeddings on top of it and supply it to semantic web uh, or like whatever like the website they cost but then they also deploy it to kaggle and to some other places and this is where we essentially picked it up we usually take it from kaggle and that's why we we follow that version of kaggle but otherwise it's every day they do updates and the idea is kind of like right now we run it on let's say kaggle kernel and then from Kaggle kernel, like output, my Kani all the way in the end creates that demo and dashboard. And for us, essentially like the goal is like, okay, like first of all, what Kaggle has to do with all of this, besides kickstarting the whole initiative, but right now the idea is kind of like to, to go away from, from there. But again, it's, it's besides the point. So the way I see it, right, it's eventually everything will be semantic or like uh, Allen Institute of AI updates the new version. We, we archive it on our dataverse. It triggers, you know, another container that 
when we build the container, we import all of these packages that we were discussing. Container gets deployed somewhere and not the way I showed you. Like that was kind of manual process. The same way I run it on my machine, I just run it on a really big instance uh, for, for a couple of hours on Amazon. Instead of this, we have Kubernetes cluster that we deploy that workload. But that will be like yet another team will probably do all of this. Our goal is just simply right now how to make it, I mean, what my manual outline and we'll start adding. And then we'll all see. And again, in this process, I definitely expect to learn a thing or two for sure. So, um, yeah. Then uh, just to because uh, I need to leave in ten minutes. Yeah. Uh, just that I will have a I will review the the things. Maybe mm -hmm. if I got uh, some ideas about how to make the process about converting the the notebooks uh, into Python packages uh, uh, better, then I will share with you and I will keep in contact. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, guys, for your time. Sounds good. And yeah, hey, thanks for bye. organizing it. Appreciate it. Okay. See you guys. Bye. See you.